So what you're going to hear, though, today is a lot of themes and a lot of uh, phrases that are littered throughout my presentation that you've heard in the previous presentations. Hopefully you grab them. If not, I'll, uh, I may make sure that you hear them. All right, so look real quick, this is the agenda. Uh, it won't take that long to get through, but a little bit of background. Why are we focusing on APIs? Program history, enablement, evaluate your program, and then lessons learned. So first is the background, and again, what I'm going to present to you is not Cerner Healthcare APIs. Some, I forgot who was talking about the FHIR APIs as well. That's not what I'm going to be talking about. We're talking about internal enterprise IT APIs. So a little bit about me, 14 years at Cerner, a little over 23 years of IT. My first IT job was a computer operator on a Unisys mainframe running Mapper. I mean, anybody... Does that sound familiar to anybody? Right? Okay. There's two? All right. You guys are my people. That's good. <laughs> All I, I literally just put a cartridge in the Unisys machine and uh, sat down and took a nap. Um, now I own our enterprise shared application services team. So we own data analytics, identity management, system, in, system management, and uh, integration services. So we are doing exactly what a lot of the talks were today. We are decentralizing our services and our, our platforms. So I own the platforms. Uh, as an example, uh, we, do, we do use WSO2. I own WSO2. But we don't own the APIs that are running on WSO2. We push that out to the business. We want them to own those rather than us, which just slows them down. I don't want centralized teams owning that. I want the business to own it so they can be much more agile than us. And most recently, I'm driving our corporate cloud adoption. It's actually, again, I get to nerd out a little bit in that. And again, being the first, uh, first group to do that in enterprise IT, it's, a little, it's kind of fun. All right, what, who is Cerner? We're a $5.5 billion healthcare IT company based out of Kansas City, Missouri. Anybody been to Kansas City? I'm going to ask you questions just so you guys are moving a little bit. <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri, not Kansas. All right, there's, there's two of them. We have about, we have about 29,000 associates. And this is what's really nuts, is we have over 3 million users of our commercial software across 27,500 clinical environments. So at one point, we had, a, we had a metric that we used in these speeches where I believe it was 25, 30% of all healthcare data was flowing through our data centers. So when you think about that, that's... that's that's a lot of responsibility. So let's dive into this. Why an API focus? Why are, we, why are we discussing APIs? And a lot of it is similar to what you've heard today. We had very deep architectural coupling, so we made some bad decisions about 15 years ago, of course, before I got there, but <laughs> um, where we had some deep integrations, direct database access, and that just kills us. When, we try, when those systems try to do upgrades, it's very painful, and those upgrades take over six months, sometimes a year, just because of all the embedded integrations. We, because we're a healthcare company, we have several different types of networks that we have to traverse as enterprise IT. We have our healthcare, which is very secure. We have our corporate, which is secure as well. And now we have two different public clouds that we're integrating with. We also, as I mentioned, we had some very old technology, and when I say slow dev process, the fastest we could deliver software was a month. So we had monthly releases, which was, again, very painful. They had to be very coordinated. We had several release managers that made sure there wasn't any impacts across each of these, each of these groups. Again, it, it, was, uh, it was not fun. And last but not least, systems were very unstable because of the deep integration. If one thing went down, it was just a domino effect. So we had to do something different. We had to do something drastically different. So a little bit of history from our perspective. Um, 2014, I owned, I owned our support tools, and I released a uh, service catalog, IT service catalog. And as, as people were using it, and one of my architects and I were chatting about it, 
we start to kind of play some what if scenarios, and we said, what if we could not only have a a uh, service catalog, what if we could have a API catalog, and what if we could have a data catalog? And so as we were talking through that, we scoured the internet and we uh, actually tried to install and run an API management system and had some challenges with it. Had some re I actually had some resource challenges as well. So we kind of put that on hiatus. And then in 2017, we re-engaged and tried to have a fresh look at API management. And with that, we actually got some funding. And I'm going to really drive into that. But a lot of it was because our business did not trust that we could manage these systems well. And they did not trust as these integrations were working. And so we used that, and we moved forward with our API management program. So what we did is we kicked off, again, we are decentralizing, so we kicked off a enterprise data platform, which is where we are completely modernizing our what, what Cerner knows as our data platform, moving from a very large, possibly a California company that starts with an O, that we run our data analytics and data warehouse on to a cloud um, native platform. And along with that, we are driving API management and really an API first uh, concept across enterprise IT. The reason I put both of those there, though, is there's a, there's a gray area across that. And there was just a slew of emails while during this, during this meeting today where we had, we had an internal IT group that wants to use some of our data that's in our data lake. And we're going back and forth on whether or not they need to get that or get it there or out of an API. And we're really trying to drive API, even to get retrieve data out of our enterprise data management system. And I'm even this may be a shock, I'm even trying to drive our data stewards and, and report writers to pull data via APIs. We really, we like the concept of the life cycle and we like the concept of running that API and versioning it. So, we started these programs, how do we enable it? Uh, how do we enable it for success? First thing we had to do is we had to define what an API was, and I heard this earlier, which I loved. Uh, an API is a product that's consumed by developers. That's our definition of how we believe APIs need to be managed. Being a product, that means there's, cert there's certain things like, and characteristics of a product that we have to drive. So we wanted to stick with that definition. We also had to invest in the engagement, and this is me. And again, I'm coming at you from a leadership perspective, and I hope those that are managers in the room will be able to pull something away, and as well as architects and uh, fellow technologists. But I had to drive this from a cost perspective. This is obvious, but when uh, internal IT, we don't exactly make money at, for Cerner. And so we are not the high man on the totem pole. We have some challenges with budgets. And this was no, this was no uh, exception. When we when we drove this, um, we had a pretty, we submitted a rather large budget and it got cut. And it got cut drastically to a point where there wasn't anything on the market that we could actually purchase. So we reevaluated and we were going through an open source discussion. And that's actually where we reinvigorated our uh, look at WSO2 and we went forward with WSO2. Uh, we also had to get a team together, and I'm going to talk about this a little later, but I needed a special leader to lead this. I needed not only a technologist, but I needed someone that could build relationships across the organization. You know, running API as a product is not, it was not common practice at Cerner. So we had to build on relationships and ensure we drove those relationships for adoption purposes. And then last but not least, and I touched on this, selecting technology was key. If we would have picked a very poor performing product, we would have, or solution, we would have been um, in a much worse place than we were before. Okay, so next thing that we did is we wanted to define what the developer experience is. If an API is, is written as a product for developers, what is that developer experience? And so for us, for me at least, it was three pronged. I'm not sure why, that's 
kind of funny. Architecture is messed up. Um, it's a three prong, and one is ease of use. We are a software company, and so we are we are our own cr worst critics. If there's anything that takes more than two or three clicks to get to the feature that they want, we get called out on that. And so we are we are very aware of what the UI what the UI experience is, what the overall quality of the solution is, which leads to quality. We uh, and when I talk about quality, I'm not talking exactly bugs. What I'm talking about is um, Disneyland and Disney World, right? How many people have been to Disneyland? Sorry, I'd, in Missouri, we usually go to Disney World, <laughs> right? You go there, it's a, it's a show. Everyone's, everyone's on a show. The employees are called actors. Everything, it is, a, it is an experience and a half, and that's why, our, that's why we spend oodles of money so our kids put a smile on their, have a smile on their face. That's what we're referring to when, when we say quality. We want a very high quality experience for the developers. And last but not least, the architecture. I mentioned this before, but because we have to traverse all those networks, and you can imagine there's a lot of security scrutiny on those networks and how we integrate with them, we, uh, we have to have a very solid architecture. All right, so then, we get to what's really important to me, and that's the program values. So first on there is cost. And again, I need to provide to my executives and, and my leadership how much this program is costing us, but I always want to keep an eye on it. Am I managing costs well? Is it skyrocketing? What's going on? Agility, we have got to release fast, and I heard this as well. We need to enable the rest of our developers to be fast. I can't provide something, and then it causes them to be slow, even if we can release you know, daily. Reliability, that's very common sense now, but we, we could not risk having, we were having multiple incidents a week. We couldn't do that anymore, and again, we had to focus on reliability. Again, this is one of our values. Security. Are we providing a, a secure solution for our developers? Are we providing a secure solution for Cerner? And then that all is wrapped around the developer experience. So this is the program values. And what, what we do with this is we all agree to these, whatever your program is, and then we lean on them. And I'll talk about that in a second, but we make sure that whenever we do releases, when we have some issues, we come back to this and we try to understand is this are we doing the right thing? Next, we want to define the engagement. So this is organizational change management 101. And so for me, again, what I try to do is we look at our target audience and our target developers or dev orgs, and we try to figure out who, are, who we need to build relationships with, who do we have relationships with that we can leverage, and where are we lacking relationships. And then meetings. Meetings, meetings, and more meetings, whether we're driving the meetings, whether we're asking to be involved in leadership meetings, we have to get the word out about what we're doing and start to get those, the reference architecture out, the patterns, the paved road for associates. Small wins. I heard this as well. Um, I cannot stress this one enough. You have to celebrate your small wins. So, as, as you build your, your, your program, each small win, you have to celebrate and build upon that. We just had a pretty, it's a small win, but it was relatively big, in that we had a security-owned solution, and we've been trying to get them to expose their APIs at least three, four months. And about one month ago, almost to the day, they finally agreed to it, and a lot of it was because of the solution that we were providing with WSO2 that they can provide their own RBAC, they can, they can provide their you know, throttle, the data that's coming through. They loved it, and they knew they couldn't do that just with their own app. And so we've built, we have that win, we're gonna build on that and try to push them for some more APIs. And then data, you've got to understand what data you're gonna measure and how to use that across your program. And then experiment. So one thing I offer my teams is you can always, I want you to try things. If something doesn't work, that's fine. Stop it and stop it quickly and try something new. It's okay to try different things in a market or in your marketing campaigns. Um, 
I'll leave that one there for now. We'll come back to it. And then that's all umbrellaed under marketing. And so one thing that IT does not do a very good job of is marketing. If anybody in here thinks you do a really good job in your internal IT, I want you to raise your hand and we need to talk because I want to learn from you. We, it's just, it is hard. We, being technologists, we don't do a good job of it. I am very proud of this team and what they've done. And I'm going to share a couple of them with you guys really quick. And if you got any of you are in New York, you saw some of this. But we wanted to create a product out of WSO2 and, and get a, get a uh, theme that we could everyone could wrap their hands around. So we are actually have rebranded WSO2 Rapid. And you can see the little play on words there. And we have stickers. We hand out the stickers. It's been fantastic. We do enablement workshops where we've had WSO2 come out and with another partner of ours, uh, Pivotal. And we put on these workshops where, you know, we have room 30 people, I think, at least, that come in and they learn how to use WSO2 and Pivotal in real use cases. And then we have a couple of guys, more the younger group, that think they're pretty clever. And so they uh, originally, bottom, the bottom center was, that was our first stab at marketing. It's called Bob. And Bob was not a very good developer and didn't think big system, and it talked about his challenge with API management. Well, then we graduated up to Bert and Gert, who are cartoons, and the cartoons are, you know, they had share their experiences. Then they really upped the ante, and I actually found this on the bathroom stall. They put a strip in there, and it's really weird, and it says, did you know people are watching you? And I have no idea what that has to do with the Rapid platform. <laughs> But it was kind of weird that it was in a stall. But anyway, they really, upped, they really upped it, and I'm proud of what they're doing. And this is a really cool one. So we weren't pushing them. This is our global team in, in Bangalore. We did not push them to drive this. They wanted to market it themselves across India. And what's even, what I'm even more proud of is the top center, that's not even our team. So we have a support product, and that support, that's the support products team. They were so happy with Rapid, they actually got a booth together and explained how Rapid was helping them provide APIs to the business. So that, that's where you, you want that word of mouth and you want other groups speaking for you. So that was, a, that was a proud day. And kind of wrapping up the engagement piece, we all want perfection. You know, being a leader, I want, I want to see that perfect program. I want to see things execute flawlessly. Reality is, there's not a perfect program, so don't expect perfection. You can aim for it, you can strive for it, but you're not going to reach it, and you have to be okay with that. And that took, actually took me a while to be okay with that. Okay, so now we're going to transition. We, we talked about enablement. Now we're transitioning. You're in execution mode. How's everything looking? Again, you go back to your values and you examine, are we, still, are we still providing agility, reliability, security, managing our costs, and having a really good developer experience? You lean on those. How do you understand what you're doing? Well, you look at your data. So the top two, one on the left, if you can't see it, is our APIs published. One on the right is subs subscribed. And so we look at that data, and if our subscriptions aren't as high as what we really want it to be, then we'll adjust our program and go talk more to consumers, understand why they're not subscribing to our services. Our API is not good. And the key is, once you review that data, it's OK to adjust. Again, adjust what you're doing. Maybe it's more blogging. Maybe it's, heaven forbid, more meetings and taking up your, that time, but that precious time, but you do what you need to do. So you adjust, and then you rinse and repeat, and you adjust, and you rinse and repeat and adjust. You constantly go through this effort. You, you have to commit to this process for your program to be successful, and we've done a really good job of that. All right, kind of wrapping this up now. One thing that drives me crazy is when I go to a conference, and I don't get any practical lessons out of it, or I don't get anything, I can't bring anything home. 
So hopefully you guys can take one of these, and I've, I've brought them up throughout the entire... Oh, man, this is really messed up. Um, so first things first, establish your core values. As you launch a program, make sure that you establish what's important to you and your program, and then lean on those. Evaluate those values often. Don't start your program and let it run and not touch it. You've got to touch it. It's just like relationships. If you don't, if you don't invest those relationships, it's not gonna, they aren't going to flourish. Same thing with your program. You've got to invest in it. Look for the small wins. doesn't matter if you're a manager, architect, developer. You've got to celebrate those small wins, no matter how small they are, no matter how vast they may be or insignificant they may seem to you. Celebrate them and build upon those small wins. And then last but not least for me, it's, it's okay to experiment. A lot of people say, yes, you know, experiment, but really behind the scenes, I don't mean it. We really do mean it. I wouldn't let them do Bert and Gert if I didn't mean it and post a comic strip on the bathroom stall. I, anyway, it's okay to try those things. And if they fail, that's, that's fine. Try something new. It's, it's not, no one was hurt, hopefully, by the uh, bathroom stall implementations. But that's what I have. Um, again, if you guys, if any of you have had a perfect program, I want to talk to you because you probably shouldn't be doing what you're doing and write a book or something. And I'll, I would jump on that bandwagon with you.